Welcome to this introductory video series on web authoring in Tableau Online. In this video series, you will learn how to create the Executive Overview interactive dashboard shown here. Along the way, you will also learn fundamental Tableau concepts and terminology. You can download the files below to follow along in your own Tableau Online account. Tableau Online is Tableau's self-service analytics platform fully hosted in the cloud. Within your preferred browser, navigate to online.tableau.com. If you don't yet have an account, sign up for a free trial. When signing in, first enter your email address. Enter your password and click on Sign In. You now see the home page of your Tableau Online site. A site is a place for your team to create, manage, and share content with one another. If you have access to multiple sites, you can switch between sites using the drop-down menu at the top left. You create Tableau dashboards and visualizations inside of workbooks. Create a new workbook. Choose whether to connect to data sources on this site, upload files from your computer, connect to on-premises and cloud data sources, or make use of the dashboard starters. To build the Executive Summary dashboard, click on Files and upload the sample Superstore file from the location where you saved it on your computer. The data source page appears. The left pane shows that the Sample Superstore spreadsheet consists of three worksheets and three named ranges. Drag the orders table to the canvas. If you make a mistake at any point, click the Undo button at the top left. Below the canvas is the data grid. Click on Update Now to display the first 1,000 rows of data from the orders table. Tableau automatically identifies the data type of each column. For geographic fields, Tableau automatically identifies the geographic role. Drag the returns table onto the canvas to the right of the orders table. The edit relationships window appears. Relationships define how tables relate to one another. Relationships dynamically adjust the SQL join type applied between tables based on the fields used in your visualizations. You relate tables based on common fields. Here, the order ID is the common field. Additional performance option settings are available. For now, keep the default settings and close the Edit Relationships window. On the canvas, the noodle represents the relationship between the tables. Hover over the noodle to display a summary of the relationship. Double-click on the noodle to reopen the Edit Relationships window as needed. Rename the data source as Sample Superstore. You have now finished creating a Tableau data source. At the bottom left, click on Sheet 1 to proceed. From the File menu, select Save As. Name the workbook Executive Overview and save it in the default project. This is the workspace area. The left sidebar is currently open to the data pane. The data pane displays all the fields from the data source. The fields are grouped by data source table. Within each table, there is a horizontal line. The fields that are above the line are called dimensions. Dimensions are fields that contain qualitative and descriptive values, such as names, dates, or geographic data. ID fields are also dimensions. Below each table's horizontal line are fields that are called measures. Measures are fields that contain numeric, quantitative values that can be aggregated using functions, such as sum and average. Dimensions control the level of aggregation of the measures in a visualization. Dimensions can be organized into hierarchies. Create a product hierarchy. Add dimensions to the hierarchy using the context menus. Alternatively, use drag and drop to add dimensions to a hierarchy or to create a new hierarchy. Create a location hierarchy and add dimensions to it.
Hide fields that you do not plan to use. You can group fields by folder and then create folders to organize them. Drag fields from the data pane to the shelves and cards to build each visualization. The largest area of the workspace is the view. The view is where your data visualization displays. You build one visualization per sheet. At the bottom of the workspace, use the Sheet tabs to add additional sheets. Combine sheets to create dashboards and stories. At the top of the workspace, use the toolbar to access commands and analysis and navigation tools. At the bottom, right-click on the sheet name and rename it as Profit Ratio by Geography. In the data pane, use the drop-down menu to create a new calculated field called Profit Ratio. You create calculated fields using fields that already exist in your data source. Depending on the fields and formula you use, the calculated field can serve as a dimension or a measure. Calculated fields appear in the data pane and have an equal sign in the icon next to them. One way to create a view is by using Show Me. In the data pane, select multiple fields while holding down the Control or Command key on your keyboard. Then, at the top right, click on Show Me to see a list of common visualization types as well as a recommended visualization type. Select the map. Hover over the map to reveal the tooltip. The number format for profit ratio should be a percentage. In the Marks card, select the context menu for profit ratio and then format number. Adjust the number formatting. The tooltip shows the applied numbered formatting. From within the Marks card, click on Color. Click on Edit Color and adjust the color palette of the map. Use Stepped Color to group values into uniform bins of color. Use the advanced settings to set the endpoint values for the palette. The legend reflects the color settings. You can use the map controls to zoom in and out, pan, make selections, and search for locations. Focus on a subset of the data by applying filtering. One method of filtering is to drag fields to the filter shelf. Show a filter to make it interactive. Adjust the filter card settings to control the filter's appearance and functionality. For a field that is not within the filter shelf, use its Show Filter option to display its interactive filter. An area chart is a line chart where the area between the line and the axis is shaded with a color. Area charts are typically used to represent accumulated totals over time and are a conventional way to display stacked lines. When working with date fields, the field is automatically modified to reflect the default date level. To change the date level of a field that you have added to the view, Select its context menu and then select either a date part, a date value, or an exact date. You can set fields as discrete or continuous. Discrete fields are colored blue and create headers. Most dimensions are discrete fields. Continuous fields are colored green and create axes. Most measures are continuous. You will often want to set date fields as continuous to keep your dates in chronological order. Edit the axis of a continuous field to change the axis range, scale, title, or tick marks.
Hold down the control or command key on your keyboard to select both a dimension and a measure. Then use the context menu to create a level of detail expression. This fixed level of detail expression always computes the sum of profit at the order ID level regardless of the dimensions that are present in the view. Add comments to calculated fields. Use two forward slashes to add a single line comment or use a combination of forward slashes and asterisks to add a multi-line comment. For a discrete dimension, edit aliases to change the labels of its members. You can set a default sort order for the values within a categorical field so that every time you use the field in the view, the values will be sorted correctly. You can control whether marks in the view are stacked or overlapping from the analysis menu. When set to automatic, the check mark indicates whether the marks are stacked or overlapping. Using the icon at the top of the legend, you can enable legend highlighting to highlight related marks in the view. Tooltips are additional data details that display when you hover over one or more marks in the view. From the Marks card, you can edit the tooltip to include both static and dynamic text. Use the Insert menu to add dynamic text such as field values, sheet properties, and more. Format the tooltip as desired. Dates can be filtered in a variety of ways. Range of dates allows you to specify a start date and end date for the range. Show the filter to make it interactive. Duplicate a sheet to create a copy that you can modify without affecting the original sheet. Replace a field currently on the columns or rows shelf by dragging and dropping another field on top of it. Text tables are also known as cross tabs or pivot tables. First, create a couple of calculated fields that will be used within our text table. Within the data pane are two automatically generated fields. Measure Names is a discrete field that contains the names of all the measures in the data pane. Measure Values contains a list of all the continuous measure values. A typical text table has fields on both the rows and column shelves. However, this text table is designed to show the aggregated measure values as text underneath of the measure names column headings. Use the Measure Values card to remove any measures you do not want to display. Alternatively, drag Measure Names to the Filter shelf and edit the filter. The Measure Values card lists the measures in the data source with their default aggregations. Rearrange the order of the measures in the Measure Values card to rearrange their order in the view.
adjust each measure's aggregation as needed. Format each measure to control the number type and display format. Edit a worksheet title to make it different than the worksheet name. Use bar charts to compare data across categories. Hover over the numerical axis to cause the sort icon to appear. Click on the sort icon multiple times to toggle between ascending, descending, or the original sort order. From the data pane, drag profit ratio to the color shelf and then apply color formatting. Within the marks card, click on label and show mark labels. Adjust the number formatting. For the measure on the column shelf, deselect Show Header to remove the header from the x-axis. Disable the tooltip so that it doesn't appear when you hover over the bars. To use the bar chart within the tooltip of the map, click over to the worksheet containing the map. The map currently displays the default tooltip. From the Marks card, click on Tooltip. Erase the default tooltip. Insert a combination of static and dynamic text. To cause the bar chart to appear within the tooltip, insert the sheet containing the bar chart. Format the tooltip as desired. Hover over the map to see the viz in tooltip. Create a dashboard so you can see and interact with all your views in one place. Choose from the many dashboard size options. Device-specific layouts can be added and customized as well. To keep objects from overlapping, select a tiled layout. Alternatively, select a floating layout. A best practice is to add horizontal and vertical layout containers to the dashboard and then to place related sheets and other objects within them. Click over to the Layout pane to locate the item hierarchy. The item hierarchy shows the organizational structure of the objects within the dashboard. Use the item hierarchy to easily select dashboard objects. Remove unnecessary and redundant objects. By default, a filter only applies to the worksheet from which it came. Modify a filter's settings to apply the filter to additional worksheets. Then confirm that the filtering is working as expected. Repeat this process for other filters. Drag filters to rearrange their order. Drag one layout container into another layout container to reposition all of its objects. Add context and interactivity to your dashboard by using actions. Add a filter action so that selecting a state on the map will filter the text table and area charts to reflect only that state.
Choose whether to show or hide individual worksheet titles within the dashboard. Edit titles to change their wording. In addition to static text, insert dynamic text to provide more meaningful worksheet titles. Save the completed dashboard. Close the workbook to leave edit mode.